of energy of conservation of energy states. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. It is simply changed from one form to another. You must learn energy. energy. Well, when energy changes form, some of the energy is lost or wasted. In other words, given out by the system and not converted to the useful form that we're looking for. This is always in the form of heat or in some cases sound due to friction. So it's either heat or sound, mostly heat. And this is then dissipated to the surroundings as heat. Efficiency then is a way of describing how good a device is at transferring energy in the intended way. In other words, an efficient device would be one that transfers most of the energy in the intended way and has very little in the way of lost energy in the form of heat or sound. In any device, not all the energy is transferred to the desired type. Some will always be lost to heat and sound. And efficiency measures how good the device is at transferring to the energy that you are interested in getting. Calculating efficiency then. This is also something that you need to learn. Efficiency is useful energy output divided by total energy input. So it's the useful output over the total input. It can also be calculated in terms of power. But you must make sure that if you have power in the top line that you have power in the bottom line. Or energy in the top line and energy in the bottom line. The one to learn is useful energy output over total energy input. Efficiency is a ratio. And because it's a ratio, it has no units. If we have joules in the top line, joules in the bottom line, the two units cancel, so overall you're left with no units. And because energy is always wasted in every physical process, the efficiency is always less than 1. If you do a calculation and you find you're getting a figure greater than 1, well then you've put your figures in upside down and you need to turn them round again. So that's a good checking point, is that the efficiency must always be less than 1. And if you get a figure that isn't less than 1, you've done something wrong in this calculation. And you've probably done it upside down. Sometimes it's quoted as a percentage. And if you're given the efficiency in a question as a percentage, you must convert it to a decimal before you calculate. So you must convert that back to a decimal before you do any calculations. Now to look at some particular examples of efficiency and types of questions that you could get. In this question, you're told that the input energy is 60,000 joules. So that's the total input energy is 60,000 joules. And we're getting 50,000 joules of heat energy out and 10,000 joules of sound energy. Now before we look at the question, we have to think about what is the intended energy transfer in a kettle. Well, we're boiling water. Therefore we want to convert the electrical energy to heat energy. This is our most useful form of the energy. So efficiency then. Useful energy out over total energy in. And the useful energy is the heat energy of 50,000 joules divided by the total energy in of the 60,000 joules, which gives us an efficiency of 0.83. And remember, there's no units for efficiency. So next example then, it's about a torch. And we have 100 joules of electrical energy going in, 60 joules of light energy going out, and 40 joules of heat energy also going out. Now for a torch, the energy we're interested in is light energy. So the torch, the intended energy conversion for a torch is from electrical to light energy. Pause now and calculate the efficiency of this torch. Well, efficiency is useful energy out over total energy in. So the useful energy is the 60 joules divided by the electrical energy in, which is 100 joules, which gives us an efficiency of 0.6. Now if we wanted to quote this as a percentage, we'd multiply by 100 and find that it's 60%. Either is ex acceptable. If the question specifically asks for a percentage, then you must convert it to percentage. Otherwise, leave it as a decimal. 
The third example involves a cyclist. The original energy input for a cyclist is the chemical energy in the food that she has consumed, which is 20,000 joules. And then we have 15,000 joules of kinetic energy and 5,000 joules of heat energy. Again, pause now and calculate the efficiency of the cyclist. Efficiency is useful out over total in. The useful energy out is 15,000 joules of kinetic energy. The total chemical energy in is 20,000 joules, which gives us an efficiency of 0.75. Now these were straightforward examples. It's not often you're given something that's laid out as clearly as the previous examples of the diagrams. A power station inputs 100,000 joules of heat energy and gets out 60,000 joules of electrical energy. That should be a capital J. What is the efficiency of the power station? Now we always start with the equation. In every question you do an exam, write the equation. So it's useful energy out. Over total energy in. The useful energy out, in this case, this is 60,000 joules of electrical energy divided by the input energy of 100,000 joules which gives you an efficiency of 0.6. A 2,000 watt kettle produces 2,000 joules of energy every second. It takes 200 seconds to boil water. During this time, 300,000 joules of heat energy have passed into the water. What is the efficiency of the kettle? Pause now, please, and calculate the efficiency of the kettle. Well, when we're starting with this question, we have an output of 300,000 joules. But we're not told the input exactly. We're told that there's 2,000 joules of energy every second, and it takes 200 seconds to boil the water. So this is linking power and energy. And we have to calculate the energy input, the electrical energy input, before we can calculate the efficiency. Let's remind ourselves. Power is energy divided by time. So energy is power times time. We're told that the power is 2,000 watts, or 2,000 joules per second. So it's 2,000 times the time of boiling, which is 200 seconds, which gives us an energy input of 400,000 joules. So the input energy is 400,000 joules. The question tells us that the useful output is 300,000 joules. So if we say efficiency Useful energy out. Again, we always write the equation. Divided by total energy in. Which is 300,000 joules of heat put out into the water. 400,000 joules of electrical energy supplied. Which gives us an efficiency of 0.75. Let's look again at our learning intentions. This video cast was intended to deliver these learning intentions, so by now you should know the 10 forms of energy, their definitions and examples of where they are found. You should be able to state the principle of conservation of energy and understand its role in all energy transfers. It's a very, very important one there. Know that energy may become dissipated and become less useful, and this still fits with the principle of conservation of energy, because we include that in our output energies. We should be able to describe energy changes in energy transfer devices and identify the most useful type or types of energy produced. We should know the efficiency equation, reminding ourselves of that. It's useful energy out divided by total energy in. And we should be able to calculate the efficiency of energy transfer devices.